High jump final has 15 competitors in it, so it, does that change things, Dan, when you're out there in a final, knowing that it's a bigger field than it usually is? A absolutely, Tam, because you think about the you think about the amount of time in between jumps, and it's not too often. I mean, this is championship, so you're 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 used to it, but when you just go to the Diamond League and you got eight or ten people, you're eight, you're eight or ten minutes in between jumps, but now you're waiting 15, 16, and everybody, if everybody uses all of their time, you can be 20 minutes in between attempts. That's why it's really important for these athletes to get up, get, have a real intention to not waste any jumps. You can't waste jumps. Get those first attempt makes. Let everybody else be the ones that are stressing out in those long breaks. The last thing you want to do when you're sitting on a third attempt is have to wait 15 minutes for your turn. Well, and it's pretty warm out there. So the athletes that you've mentioned, Nicola Olishlagas, who leads the top list this year with 202, we can see her on screen with Eleanor Patterson, and Mahuchik, will they change the way that they would start the competition, the height they're coming in at, so that they don't have to wait as long? Well, they, they very well could. Uh, I believe, you know, just what was interesting is in the men's pole vault yesterday, Every competitor jumped at the opening bar in that in that finals. And I was really surprised to see Mondo to Planis. And so what we're seeing here at these championships, defending champions have had it rough. You do not want to be sitting out there because it's the amount of time from your last warm-up jump to the amount of time you take your first jump. Why not get in there, get into the competition, get into a groove? And you can see the contrast in how they prepare. Nicola Oleschlager, Eleanor Patterson and Mahuchik are looking quite relaxed. Vashdai had a bit of a smile for the camera. But Irina Gerashchenko, the other Ukraine athlete, just looked like she was already in focus mode. A good crowd has gathered for this women's high jump final. They're about to be announced to the crowd. Arena. She had a few troubles in qualification. Her desire to clear 192, she said, interfered with her technique. Psychology is a big part of the high jump. She said she's going to be much better focused in this final. So there's two Australians, two Ukrainians, and two French women for the first time. And here is what they are after, those medals right on place, dangling right in front of them like a carrot. The four-time outdoor national champion, seventh in the Euros with a PB of 192, the Slovenian 23-year-old, Leah Apostolovsky. One of the French women, national indoor and outdoor champion this year, debut at the World Champs and sailed into the final, Selene Jekyll. Jumping last in the final tonight, bronze in the European Indoors in 2021 with a massive 196, the Finnish athlete, 24-year-old Ella Yunila. A PB in qualifying, couple of misses at 189, then cleared at 192 on third attempt. The Cyprus athlete, 21-year-old Elena Kulichenko. Fabulous indoor season, saw this woman clear 198. She was sixth in the European indoors this year. From Germany, Christina Honsel. The second of the French women. Tears of joy when they both qualified. Successful junior here in the final for the first time. 25-year-old from France. Noel Manikau and the Jamaican Commonwealth Games gold medalist finalist last year cleared 192 in qualifying national record holder of Jamaica with a 197 Lamara Distant eighth in the la last year's world championships with 196 the bronze medalist from the world indoors from Kazakhstan Nadezda Dubovitskaya and it's an athlete to watch the 18 year old from Serbia, bronze at the world under 20s last year. It's just 17. She was sixth the year before, won the European under 20s this year, the national champion in the long jump and high jump, Angelina Topic. Sixth in the world champs back in 2017 at just 20 years of age, was a successful heptathlete as a junior, double gold in the world under 20s in heptathlon and high jump in 2014. The Great Britain athlete, Morgan Lake. From Ukraine, fourth at the Tokyo Olympics, fourth at the World Champions last year, wanting to be on that podium. 
Irina Garishchenko. Sixth in the Tokyo Olympics after hitting two meters for bronze in 2019 World Championship. Failed to make it out of qualifying last year. Can she get on the podium? From the USA, Vashti Cunningham. One of the Australians, the Olympic silver medalist, has had an incredible season today. Tops the world list. Nicola Olishlagers. And the defending champion, the 27-year-old from Australia, has clawed her way back from an injury and operation at the beginning of the year to be back in contention for another medal. Eleanor Patterson. And finally in the lineup, at just 21 years of age, hard to believe she's still so young with her incredible CV to date. Olympic medalist at just 19, won her first world championship medalist at 18. From the Ukraine, Yaroslava Mahuchik. Well, Dan, it's a pretty incredible lineup that we've got assembled here for this World Championship. These ladies have been waiting all week long, and I always felt bad as a, as a decathlete. It's later in the program, but these athletes have been here since the beginning with their team, getting through training, being on the practice track, seeing the bright lights of the stadium, waiting for their moments. They got a chance to get out and qualify now. It is for the gold, silver, and the bronze. But the anticipation when you're the last, I mean, you're on the last day, one of the last events to go, oh, you cannot wait till it is your turn. Well, this is interesting. Eleanor Patterson is the opening jump of the defending champion, and she's decided to take this opening attempt. I think it's at 185, the bar's been set. I can't. And 185 is a, a height that Eleanor would usually do in her sleep. But as we mentioned, she has had surgery this year. She fractured her fifth metatarsal in a misstep in warm-up in indoor competition in Slovakia. So she might just need to get one on the board just for some confidence. like an easy jump. Remember last season when she brought that world championship home? She really connected with the crowd. That was a that was a great D zone down there at Eugene, Oregon. And there were a lot of people when Vashti Cunningham went out. I think that I think the, the, the all eyes turned to the Australian and and she got she got a lot of fans and the 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 Budapest fans have been really great. But you got to show a little character, show them some passion and they'll get on your side. We saw that in the high jump men's didn't we with Tam Berry. 28-year-old from France, Jaquel. This is a big occasion for Jaquel. First time she has been to a World Championships and she sailed into the World Championship finals. So just a little bit of nerves perhaps, Dan? Well, it's what's interesting, Tam, is you can take practice jumps for two hours, but there is just something different about you taking off the sweats and then calling your name and now it is your turn. It's like, oh, everything tightens up a little bit. And I think that's one of the reasons why some of these uh, we call so-called so better jumpers get in there and take a jump. You know, don't, don't let 30 minutes. If you don't take a jump at this first height, you could be looking at 30 to 40 minutes before you take your first attempt. And that is, that is not where you want to be in a championship meet. Anna Postolovsky from Slovenia. She comfortably clears that opening height of 185. She was running for the Athletes Commission here. Jamaican athlete. Now, she's a bit of a talent, Lamara Diston. She won that Commonwealth Games, beating the newly crowned world champion, Patterson. So she is a big meet performer. But she has had things her own way this entire collegiate track and field season. That was a good looking jump. We've seen her really jump well, and then we've seen her just have some off days. I know her coach really well, Mario Satania at Texas A&M. And for the qualifying, I, I saw him in the restroom quick before the before the qualifying, and, and he said, uh, I got to get down there and I got to get my jumper up. And she's just sometimes, she just sometimes doesn't bring it. And Hansel of Germany, the 26 year old, She's been struggling this season. 189 was her season's best, so 185 opening clearance. She'll be happy with that. She was out in the qualifying in Doha, went on debut. 
and her sister her family's just flown in to see this final. I think she was a bit surprised to make the final. Now this is an interesting athlete, the Serbian who only turned 18 on July 26. Angelina Topic. Well, she made that easily, but when I saw her in qualifying, she was just dropping that right shoulder a little bit, heading into the bar. And she's, you know, I, I look at her, and, and, I, and you can't help but think about Mondo Duplantis, all right? Mondo Duplantis said that at a very young age, he knew that pole vaulting was going to be really prevalent in his life. But to be a world champion, to be to be the world record holder, it, you, just, you just can't want to follow in your father's footsteps. You have to be driven. And uh, Topic is, is another example. Her father was an outstanding high jumper, Serbian record holder, and you know he, he's coaching her. But I see a lot of the same similarities. And Gerashchenko clears that opening height comfortably, like we would expect. And she's been good all season till yesterday's scaring qualifier. Talk about families. Her husband Sergey is a retired high jumper as well. He's cleared 220. Next up, Dubovitskaya of Kazakhstan. She was eighth in the World Championships last year, so she's used to this company. Cleared 196 in those World Championships. She'll want to change that takeoff point. She looked like she took off a little bit too far down the bar. You see her when she landed clear over there by that right standard, and you just want to narrow that window where you actually go over the bar. You don't want to go down the bar, give yourself too, too far, too many chances, too much time over that bar. And the second of the French athletes, Menica, gets over the height that a fellow countrywoman could not in the first attempt. We've seen some shaky legs here. I, I like I like them. The, the majority of the jumpers, I think we're maybe going to see everybody at this opening bar, and rightly so. These championships have turned out to be really important and, and really hard on past championships. There is no quarter given here. Get in there, get your feet wet, and fight for it from the beginning. <gasps> oh. We've seen this from Cunningham before, where she has a few issues with some of the heights that she should be able to clear so easily. She's now just reaffirming to herself that she should have this height. That was you, all. You heard a gasp from the crowd. That was that was rather interesting. She looked like she was just way too close to the bar at takeoff. She'll adjust her stride, get a little bit more active. Um, Mahuchik has decided not to participate in this opening round. Does that become a little bit of a psychological battle, uh, battle too, to be able to say, I'm that good, I don't want to? Absolutely. That, that sends a message. I, I love it. It, it. it tells the rest of the competitors, I'm very good. I'm probably better than all of you, so I'm going to pass in the first round. The confidence must be high, oh, which, yeah. is, which is good for an athlete who has cleared 206. 185 should be something that she could do in any training attempt, but the... The fact that it's a world championship, she's desperate for that gold global medal. As we saw Morgan Lake, the Great Britain athlete, clear the opening height. Aha, so Nicola Oleschlag has seen Mahuchik miss that uh, to not decide to take that opening height. So Oleschlag has, has decided to rest as well. Kudachenko, the Cyprus athlete, clear. So it's only one athlete so far. Two athletes, sorry, with Vashdai Cunningham and Salayan Jekyll with the cross at this opening height. 24-year-old from Finland, Ella Yunila, third at those European indoors a couple of years ago with a fantastic 196. Has just struggled to recapture that form, but there you go. Well, just a, a easy make on the first attempt can really set your mind at ease. We'll see second attempts now by just two athletes. We go back to. Elena Kulachenko, and I get a chance to follow her while she's at the University of Georgia. I also follow her on social media. And she only got a qualifier just weeks before the World Championship. And she was so thrilled to say she got her qualifier, and otherwise, I don't think she would have been here. 
The occasion for Celine Jaquel. Well, she was in the European finals last year and finished in 13th place. Absolute tears of joy when her and her French countrywoman made this final together to be the first time two French women have made the World Championship final. As we see, Vashti Cunningham would have expected her to clear that first opening height at 185 on the first attempt. Another athlete who is from a family of sports people. Oh, dear. Well, that's very interesting. You know, usually we see when Vashti has a miss at a low bar, she comes back and just absolutely booms it. But there was a hesitation on those last two steps. Look for her to be consistent in the last two strides, but that penultimate, she reached on that penultimate, and then there was just no power on that takeoff. Well, she struggled in qualifying, and she said that the mark wasn't right, so she couldn't get her takeover right at the right spot. So she changed the mark a bit and was able to get it correct. So she looks like she's having some run-up issues out there as well. Now, she's the only athlete, so she has to go back straight away and take this attempt. It's not how she wanted to start this World Championship final. Third attempt for Vashti Cunningham of the USA. Can she get over this opening height? Well, even even when don't even when things don't feel right on the ground, you have to, as an athlete, at some point, go back to your mark and trust it. And look at she's saying she's just, she's overthinking it. She's like, look, this doesn't feel right. Something on her run is not great. But for an athlete like Bash, I, whether your run is on or not, this is one meter eighty-five. You've been over this a hundred times. You put your foot in the ground and you show us how athletic you are and she did right there and hopefully she can hopefully she can get on track there yeah, she looked like she was telling herself that was crazy absolutely crazy because i mean she, that's a height that she would attempt so easily at training she's just you know it is a big occasion and you forget that somebody like Vashti cunningham is only 25 years of age and it still is what they train for all year. So the occasion is still big, even if you've been out there and done it before. But as a high level athlete, what happens occasionally is you try to technique it. You know, it's like, look, my body's gonna, my body's gonna perform the way that I've trained it to. I'm just gonna, you know, as long as I run my turn, as long as I keep my knees up, boom, I'm gonna technique it. And then you get a couple misses and you're like, what am I doing? Run and jump. Which is what Gerashchenko said about her qualifiers. She said that, she desperately wanted to clear 192 and the fact that she was focusing on that interfered with her focus on her technique. Yep. Okay, the bar's been raised to 190. The defending champion is the first high jumper to attempt this height. She saw her partner Marco Fasanotti, the Italian high jumper in the final and was out in the crowd. So she'll be used to the crowd, the atmosphere, being on the last day, desperate to get out here. Well, she's bringing it. I say that about her. She loved the speed jumpers because they have to take off from such a long way away from the bar. And man, she comes in off the track and she is running. I had a one of the one of the coaches that I worked with for years, Coach Greg Kraft at Arizona State University. He said. There's never too much speed for the high jump if an athlete can handle it. And Patterson probably has the quickest run of anybody out there, but she's just times it beautifully. And Shaquille got over this on the first attempt. And that wasn't a bad attempt, you know, a little bit of a little bit of bar luck there, and she she should have been over. Well, she's cleared 192 indoors this year, but this is around about the heights that will test Jaquel. She's one of the athletes with the lower personal best. Fantastic effort for Jaquel to have made this final, but she'll be wanting to walk away with a personal best as a minimum. Slovenian athlete, Postolovsky.
Well, and what's interesting is every one of these jumpers who makes a bar gets out of the pit. They look so relieved. <laughs> I think this I think this high jump apron is really a challenge for a lot of these athletes and this Mondo surface man it is quick and if you're not used to the super fast surfaces like this you've got and you've got to be active on the Mondo you let a stride bounce you let a stride float and you're and you're and you're out of your takeoff spot. So we see Distin the Jamaican. Well that is a beautiful jump but just a little bit of late little bit of lazy on the top would have been horrible to see her that far over the bar and then her take it off you know just with a just with a flippant heel kick there but the, we go back to the mondo surface you've got to be active on the mondo you can't let the mondo bounce you around you're the one who has to be active Consul of germany She was sixth at the European indoors in 2023. She's been struggling her season's best outdoors. Isn't the same as her indoors. She, she jumped to 198 indoors and was incredible, but hasn't recaptured that form outdoors. Now, when you talk about the Mondo surface and it being fast, which of these jumpers do you feel like the surface is going to advantage? Well, the, it's 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 the athletes with the most experience. You come to championships like this, can you can you manage your emotions? Well, and there, you know, is somebody who looks like they aren't even really thinking about the run. You could see that you could see that uh, Vashti is now a little bit concerned. You could see concern in her face, and uh, Lamara Distin just comes up there with no hesitation. There you go, top edge, no hesitation. So, it, it, you know, does it favor a fast, you know, or a, and, and I don't think it really favors one or the other, but um, this is a surface that you have to come out here. You've got to spend time on it and you've got to dial it in. There's Chenko, the Ukrainian. Beautiful high, beautiful jump. Well, and that is a, a better jump than we saw her all through qualifying. She looked like she had some issues. There were a number of athletes who were looked really stressed by the time they got to the end of that qualifying they didn't have they didn't have a clue whether they were going to make it or not well she was one of the athletes in that lineup that looked like she was really focused i think that the competition in qualifying she learned a lot about herself she said that she was going to go back and she was just going to focus better and she was not going to get distracted by wanting to jump high she was going to keep focusing on that technical aspects that she would train over and over again and she looks like she's really switched on gerashchenko for a big big height Dubovskaya, Kazakhstan athlete, first attempt at 190. Adequate, certainly. But she's somebody who uh, really struggled in the qualifying rounds. She doesn't arch her back as much as some of the other athletes. It's sort of got a slower technique, float almost over the bar. Minicare. France. They almost knew by the way that they reacted, the two French athletes, for making the final, the tears of joy out in the track, the hugging, that they knew that making this final was such a great effort for them. So they will have different goals than some of the athletes that are chasing those medals out here. They'll be after the experience and also just seeing if they can push to get personal best. Now 193 is Menica's best from this season, so she knows she can clear 190. So what's interesting about Vashti, and, and I've noticed this in past years, there you see her, her father, Randall Cunningham. He's got the earplugs in. Not sure how he's gonna hear his daughter with his, with his earplugs in. He must be taking those out. I like the way she looks as the bar goes up and she gets more aggressive. All right, and here we are at uh, at 190 on her second attempt. She's had to shift now into higher gear. She has to bring it, and we talk a little bit about the surface, and she's just noticing, hey, look, she can't be delivered on this surface. She's got to push a little bit. And Mahuchik taking her opening attempt. 
190 and over. So she's into the competition now with an open ring round clearance of 190. Well, that was a good looking jump. Very Mondo ish. You know, just with authority for her to pass on the first round. Step up, hammer one. A first attempt make, make here for Morgan would be a big confidence builder. Well, she was fabulous indoors this season. She cleared 199, which was a national record. And she's just trying to recapture that form outdoors. She knows that she has the ability to go deep into a high jump global competition. Fabulous effort. Well, she had a lot of height on the back end as well. She was still going up when she went over that bar. And Morgan Lake has not had great success at these big championships, especially after all the success she had as a young athlete in the multi events. And she and spoke about that. She spoke about yeah. that in the mix zone. She said that she's here to win a medal. She wants a medal. So, I mean, it's a big ask. There's quality athletes, as we see. Ollie Schlagers, the Australian Olympic medalist, opening up her campaign. Very nice. And you go back to Morgan Lake just for a second. I had a chance to talk to Lyndon Victor in the mix zone. And, and one of the things that I truly believe in is seeing yourself win that medal, seeing yourself accomplish those goals. And Lyndon Victor said he always wanted to win a medal, but he never truly believed it until this year. And go back to Morgan Lake, it's like, you've got to believe, not just want it. As Kulachenko from Cyprus misses her opening attempt at 190. She was first round clearance over 185. So this is her first miss for the competition. Yeah, and Oli Schlagers does do a lot of going over how the jump went and talking to herself about what she did right. She writes in that journal after each attempt and she chooses one area to focus on for the next jump, whether it be run up or take off. So she does do a lot of that positive thinking out there to try and make sure that she keeps her head in the game and, and keeps herself focused on the things that she's getting right, but also the things that she can work on throughout the competition. Vanilla of Finland. personal best of 196 indoors, her season's best of 192, so another athlete who knows that she can clear this. Just sat on the bar on the way over. But when you're dabbling in and around your season best and, you know, you want to come in here and you want to have a season best, you want to come in here and have a personal best, but most often what you've seen throughout the season is what, it, is what you're going to get here at the championships. So my coach always would say, hey, look, just do what you did to get there. That's not a bad look at jump. She's just got to put it in the right spot. Get that timing. But neither one of the French athletes are really going to overpower you with their takeoff. They need to run that turn. They need to be consistent lay that turn in and if they don't get that right then they just I don't think they're very powerful jumpers here's Hansel of Germany getting the crowd involved well this height seems to be sorting out a few of the athletes like I said, with Hansel, she did have that incredible indoor jump of 198 earlier in the year. She's just trying to replicate it on the outdoor surface. Hasn't quite been able to reach the heights that she could in the indoors. Minika taking her second attempt at 190. Nice. The athlete who won the European Apps Team Championships in Poland earlier in the year, she cleared 192 there, so she has competed in some big meets this year. 190 clearance for the second attempt. Kulachenko. The Cypriot going for their second round attempt. Not a bad 
that attempt by Kulichenko, the 21-year-old. She won the silver in the high jump at the World Universities with a 191, so can, again, get over this. What do you think of that jump, Dan? No, and the, she's just a little closer on that second attempt. Again, when these... You see, the majority of the mistakes that these athletes will make at these lower bars is just, you want to get over the bar, you got to go up before you can get over. And that's a constant fight as a high jumper, is going vertical before you go horizontally. Well, this is a big occasion for Yunilla of Finland. She was out in the qualifiers for Doha World Champs, Olympics, and last year's World Champs and European Champs. So, a fabulous effort for her to make this final. She cleared 189 in qualifying on her second attempt. These athletes now need these clearance to stay in the competition. Shaquille. Ah. Well, and that's just a ways to jump. You just spent the last 10 minutes visualizing it, thinking about it. You get up there and just don't execute the run properly. It was a lazy run up, wasn't it? Well, and what happened is she came out of her turn and she pressed forward. You gotta, if you're, you gotta lean into that turn. You don't wanna get your head and shoulders too far forward in your run, and that's what it looked like she did. And then, then when she got to the bar, she looked like she overstrided just a little bit. It's one of those things, though. She had a good third attempt at 192 yesterday, so that disappointment might be all it takes to give her the hunger to make that next step up next year. Consul of Germany. Her third attempt at 190. And she's over. Well, that's just good patience. Riding that up to the top. That was just emotion. She used the emotion of the crowd. Look at the red marks on her leg. She she was she was getting <laughs> up for that jump, and I'd love to see just emotion getting her over that bar. This is Kulichenko. Wow! And I love it. She doesn't waste any time. She steps up while the crowd is still engaged, and that is the best-looking jump I've seen from her in the qualifying and here in the finals. Boom! She drifts a little into that bar, but she's able just to hesitate. A couple of good makes in a row there, keeping her alive. And the Finnish athlete, Yunilla. She needs to get over this to stay alive in the competition. Oh, great height over that bar. Where was that before? And she knows it. She laid in that run and she put her foot on the ground with a huge clearance there. She's got to believe. She's just, give me that jump two more times for two more makes. She'd be knocking at the door of a personal best tonight. That was an incredible attempt, wasn't it? That Very she nice. Great height over the bar. She said that she absolutely loves the high jump, not just for the feeling of getting over that bar, but the friends that you make in this sport. And they do look like they come up against each other and they battle it out but if you watch that men's high jump competition after the competition's over they genuinely look like great mates these competitions are difficult there's a lot of stress involved and yes track and field is fun but like any other sport when you get to the very top this is where you do feel the pressure this is where you do feel the stress and so when you're down there competing against and for against other competitors and four global medals when the competition is over you're your friends and you've all gone through it together and it's an experience it's an experience that you all went through together and and that's the thing that binds you together certainly 
Well, there's six jumpers in this field that have cleared two metres in their lifetime. One of them is Eleanor Patterson of Australia, the defending champion. We've spoken about how she hasn't had the smoothest of lead-ins, dealing with some energy where, injuries where she had to teach herself how to walk again, to run again and to jump again. What has she got here? The bars are 194. Nicely done. I'm looking for consistency from her first step. And I'm still trying to figure out how she runs and skips into her mark. But she's doing a very good job at takeoff. She, the, 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 the single arm roundhouse always throws me off just a little bit, but she does it beautifully. And she's got great timing. But I just, when she brings that much speed, I'm thinking, be consistent, and she has found a way to do it. Well, she was a fabulous junior who fell in love with the sport. She's a country athlete in Victoria, Eleanor Patterson. Happily over that 194. Kostolovsky of Slovenia. Unfortunately, misses her first attempt. And those last three strides just have to go boom, boom, boom. And those were slow last strides. You see where she went over that bar. She's more than halfway down the bar on that right side. So will she make adjustments to her run up then after that? I don't think she should probably move her step. She needs to be more active at takeoff. Boom, boom, boom. If you listen for the tempo in those last three strides, instead of boom, 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 they have to be boom, boom, boom. Just get more active. Yep. Be ready. Be ready in those last three. And she looked like she just thought, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to overpower it just a bit. And that's what you talked about before they go back and they now visualize themselves how they do it correctly. How they clear that bar. There's not a lot of times before attempts, though. Lamara Distant, who has looked so far in this competition that she is getting fabulous height off the ground. She just needs to make sure she gets that takeoff point right so that when the bar does move up to the higher heights, that she is in that right position. Wow. Well, just virtually unchallenged over the last couple years in Jamaica, certainly. And a talent like this comes along in an event that, uh, in an event that isn't, uh, you know, really that well known uh, for, you know, for Jamaicans, certainly. Um, but she showed her youth last year, but she's really shown some experience this season. Oh, that was a great attempt by Hansel, the German, and she knows it. Oh. You know, what she did really well on the last jump was just she found her layout position. She was really able to delay it on the top. As we see Distant, the Jamaican, walking back to her area where she can concentrate on the next height, which will be 197. But she's at Texas A&M, you said. She's doing majoring in sports marketing. And she said that she's desperate for that two metre. And she thought that the reason why she hasn't got the two metres yet is her approach. Her approach has been the problem. And she's been working on that with her coach. Well, and it's consistency. And oh my gosh, I mean, it is, it is just so loud in this stadium right now. And I, and I hope these high jumpers you know, take advantage of the fact that uh, this place is going crazy. And it, it's the men's 5K, so it's like everybody stops and watches. It makes it quite difficult when there's a circular event and the athletes have spread out across the track for the high jumpers who have to wait for the gap to go, but stay focused. Topic, the Serbian, the youngster, the 18-year-old, whose dad was a brilliant high jumper, the Serbian high jump record holder, and mom is a Serbian triple jump record holder. Oh, and she's just missed that opening round attempt at 194. The crowd is going absolutely crazy because that 5,000 metres just came to a conclusion. I saw you're keep, you keeping one eye on it, Dan. What did you think? <laughs> well, and what's interesting is Look at the height, oh. Oh, you know, it's just, it's just, it's timing as well. I was kind of concerned that she was going here in the height, but 
They called her name. Her clock was ticking. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for her not to go. But it looked that would have been a little distracting for me as a jumper. Oh, Garashenko sails clear, not having any of the issues that she had in qualifying. Steely focused. There's been no emotion on the face of Garashenko, and she has the exact score sheet that she would have been after. Three attempts, three clearances. Well, she's one of the most experienced jumpers in the field, and I thought she looked really inexperienced in the qualifying rounds, and so here she looks like she's in a groove. She just needs to stay there over this next bar. The athlete from Kazakhstan, Dubovitskaya. Clean scorecard so far. First attempt at 194. One of the athletes in the field that does have a personal best of two meters. Season's best of 194. So this has been where her form has been leading into the competition. It's a bit of a flat jump, Dan. Yeah, that's that's what I was going to say. And I saw her, you know, look like this a little bit in the qualifying rounds as well. She was one of those athletes with a lot of concern on her face as they got to the end of the qualifying. And, and you're on you're on pit A, you're on pit B, and you're constantly looking over at the other group to see how high their bar is, and you're trying to do the math. Am I going to get in? Do I need this bar? And you've got to just concentrate on your own jumping. Well, this would be a personal best high for Minica of France. So looking like she's a little bit daunted by the height. Well, this is just an athlete who didn't like the takeoff. As soon as she hit her takeoff foot, she knew you could see her just leaning into the bar. But the winners, the ones who win the, the medals tonight, don't waste jumps like that. Ashtai Cunningham. We saw her dad in the crowd, the NFL nickname, the ultimate weapon. She had got into athletics because of her brother high jumping and wanted to join in. Ooh. But again, the hesitation. Did you see the hesitation? Yeah. Two strides out. And she does leap a little bit to that penultimate. But when I can notice it, the takeoff's just not that great. So and, it's well, it's, it's going to say just, you know, she, she's, what's, she's such an interesting story. And... She's getting to the point now where a lot of experts have said, hey, look, your dad's done a wonderful job. He's learned how to high coach you in the high jump. He coached you and he coached your brother, but maybe it's time that she go to an expert. Mahuchik, first attempt, 194. Oh, she looked very close to that bar on takeoff. This surface will send you. It's fast, and look how close she was, and look how far down the middle of the bar as well I was just traveling traveling you know that she needs to that that's just a jump that she didn't take vertically so it's nice to see that the other contenders the other competitors in this are, aren't the only ones struggling best jumper in the world is as well but we go back to bash Dye cunningham um you know i think they, they've got a great situation but her dad is a pastor in las vegas yep. and he built a youth center right near the church and they've got a wonderful jumping area and now he coaches three four five of the best u.s jumpers they've all come down there they've moved down there and you know she's she's a she's a wonderful kid her she, her family means a lot to her i just i think she's in the right place and so much of being a successful athlete in the sport of track and field is what you do in your daily life morgan lake well, this 194 height is really sorting a few athletes out. We've seen actually some attempts that haven't been that good, not even close. So they're going to have to go back, talk to their coaches in the crowd and reassess what they have to do to make sure that not only do their second attempts hopefully clear, but they have attempts that give them confidence to move throughout the competition. Well, let's see what Oli Schlagers can do here. There's nothing comfortable 
about the environment that they're in right now. The crowd is not comfortable. The track, the surface, doesn't look comfortable for anybody but Eleanor Patterson. Interesting. And it's just trying to figure out what makes sense out there. What do I focus in on? What is it, what is it that I can do to lock in and, and figure this thing out? Well, so far at 194, we only have three athletes that have cleared this height. Eleanor Patterson, who has a clean scorecard, Lamara Distin, the Jamaican, and Irina Gerashchenko, the Ukrainian. Kulichenko had to take three attempts to get over 190. Not a bad attempt. No, she took that. She took that make on that last bar, and that looked like an identical jump. But this might just be beyond her yeah. as well. If she clears this this height, it'd be a two centimeter personal best indoors or out. So this is something that she's never done in her whole lifetime as a high jumper. So it is a big ask. But she is here at the championships. She's enjoying her time. I've seen her on social media. I've seen her out and about in the city as well. She looks like she's having a really great time with her family. And for some of these young athletes, you come in here not with the expectation to win the win the win a medal, but is to get here and get this experience under your belt. You know, the Finnish athlete also having problems here, the 24 year old. Now she is an athlete that has cleared this height. Indoors she cleared 196, so it's not foreign to her, but we have made mention of the run up and how it is very different, the conditions out there. And it, I mean, we've seen it throughout many of the field event competitions. Some of these rounds have thrown up curveballs. You saw it on the triple jump in the women, Yulimar Rojas didn't get it done until the sixth round, which is so uncharacteristic of an athlete of that quality. So maybe they've just got to get used to those conditions out there. Postolovsky. Well, the women's long jump qualifying was a real challenge. It had rained earlier in the evening, and then when the track dried out, it became really fast. And when the track is in the sun all day long and it makes the change from the hotter weather to the cooler weather, it does change things out there. And, and what I'm seeing here in the high jump is a real inconsistent takeoff points. All the athletes are struggling with it just a little bit. And like I said, nobody but Patterson has really looked like they figured out this surface. Because sometimes on a fast surface, you got to hold back a little bit. Well, do you, do you think it's a different surface to what they would have come across in the, the day where the sun was beating down compared to the night? A absolutely, yes. Track's a little bit softer in the day when it's really experiencing the high heat. Hey! Oh. Ponzo, the German, is over 194. And she's happy. She has that indoor personal best of 198, but she's been chasing that outdoors. Nice going, just slid over that gentle rub on the bar. But she's seeing also what's going on with the rest of the competition. Now, it just, just four over 194. This puts her in a great position. Topic, the youngster. Oh, that's better. That's more like it. So she was able to make that adjustment from the first round attempt at 194, and that looked like a great attempt. With so much pressure into that left leg, she does a really good job of holding those forces back. And that's really rare that you see an athlete this young understand the mechanics like she, but of course her father did it at a high level and he's been teaching her how to do it probably since she's eight, nine, 10 years old. Well, she's also a long jumper, which is incredible yeah. because the long jump takeoff point where your foot lands is so different to the takeoff of a high jumper. So she's obviously very coordinated that she can duel 
do both of them, like Javon Harrison, the USA athlete who focused on the high jump here, is also an incredible jumper. And Dubovitskaya just misses again. That was her second round attempt at 194. Well, she just hasn't looked as dynamic this entire outdoor season as, as we've seen her in the past. Yeah, she has the season's best of 194 against that personal best of two meters. So and this French athlete is having a great competition, many care. Again with the hand on the bar at the takeoff point. Just doesn't look like she is confident at this height. No, and you can see that on the run. And what happens, the bar goes up. This is just uh, alien territory for you. And so you bear down on the run. You're trying to bring a little bit more speed, trying to load up just a little bit more. And when you do that, you just have that much, your odds of hitting your takeoff point just are, are, are much, much smaller. And so she's coming in there, and the timing's not right. Well, next jumper to go is Vashtai Cunningham, who has been having all sorts of issues with her run-up. Well, there's a little bit of pressure on Vashtai. You know, she, she got the bronze medal in Doha. And then last year, she doesn't get through qualifying in front of the home crowd. And she's been jumping well. She's been jumping consistent. And she didn't want to come here to the World Championships. and. Have, another, have a performance like last season. No, and it's hard because those sort of things play on your mind in a, in, a, in a competition. You try to focus on the controllables, the things that your coach have told you to focus on, but at the end of the day, these athletes are human, so there will be elements where doubt does creep in. And when you have a couple of misses in a high jump competition, you don't have that, you lose a little bit of that confidence that you take in. So when self-doubt creeps in, you have to win the battle with yourself as well as the battle of trying to clear the high jump. So Vashtar Cunningham with her second attempt at 194. She took three attempts to get over the opening height. She sailed over 190. Can she make this clearance on her second attempt? Mm. You can see she's got the height, right? She, these jumps are very uncharacteristic of her. You know, usually two out of three of these jumps are really connected jumps. She hits her takeoff point, she finds her line. But we're only seeing about one in three jumps now with, that are really that solid. So Vashti, she's just, she's just gotta continue to work out there. And you just gotta trust your, trust your takeoff point. Trust your start point. Do the things that your coach is seeing. Make those adjustments. Well, Mahuchik is in a position she wouldn't have expected to be in this competition. You can see her coach, Tatiana Stepanova, is really into seeing how she goes here. Oh, gets it done. She still looks very close. But that, that jump, even that jump, she drifted. That jump, she drifted and had to really pull a, a Javon, a la Javon Harrison. And she got the job done, though. She's got, she's got that clearance. She's got the height. There's a lot of noise in the stadium because the 800 meters is coming to a conclusion. So Mahuchik will be a lot happier with that, as will her coach, Tatiana Stepanova, who used to be a 400 meter hurdler. Morgan Lake. No. This height is challenging Morgan Lake. She looks so fabulous in the opening two heights. She just doesn't look like she is powering up and getting the, the power out of that takeoff foot, leaning a little bit into the bar. So she's hitting it with her shoulder. Okay, 
And Nicola Oleslager, she's under a bit of pressure. This is true to Nicola style. She talks to herself. Gives herself some positive reinforcement. She genuinely looks like she is loving it out there. Yes! And she's over that second round clearance. And she's happy with it. She's a height she knows she can do, Dan, but just those nerves out there, you know how important that clearance is. Well, I love what she's doing, her routine. She goes back, she writes in her book. She figures out, here she goes. And what's great is she knows what she said prior to that jump and the routine. Get back in the same routine. Say exactly the same things. Think exactly the same things. Kulichenko, Cypress. This is her second round attempt. She's definitely having and it's a goal at it. It is a height that she hasn't cleared in her lifetime. She's not pulling out of the attempt, but it just seems that it's a height that's a little bit beyond her at the moment. Unilla of Finland. She's an aggressive jumper at her best. a couple of years not quite at the heights that she would have liked to be at after clearing 196 as a 22 year old way out on that one you could just see that takeoff point is like whoa and when you're and when you hit that takeoff point and you're so far away from the bar the only thing you really can do is lean into it She'll go over to her coach, Thomas Salonen. See if she can get some instructions that'll give her all she needs to get a better attempt out in that third round. We are now going through the third round attempts at 194. Postolovsky of Slovenia. one of six athletes on their third round attempt. Well, unfortunately, that's all we'll see of Leah Apostolovsky tonight, the Slovenian. She was attempting a personal best. So she cleared an 190. She exited the competition in eighth position at the moment. Next to go will be Kazakhstan athlete Dubovitskaya, who we've spoken about can clear these heights, but just hasn't looked like the athlete that has soared over two meters in the past. She looks nervous. Well, like I said, everything out there, just you, you, you come here with a lot of experience. You come here with a vision and all of a sudden you get in this position and it's like, you know, this, this service doesn't feel comfortable and this crowd is overwhelming and you got to dig deep to find your peace. Oh. And find a way to concentrate on nothing but the execution of this run. Well, she gave it her all in that run up. You could tell that she really wanted to clear that bar, but unfortunately, Dubovitskaya bows out of the competition with 190 being her best attempt, and she is in eighth, oh, eighth position. And so often in these competitions, there will be a designated height that will that will we'll just call it the disastrous height where we lose the majority of these athletes. And it seems like 194 was. Maybe that designated height. Menika, wrapped to be in this final. Can she stand it? No. 
you could just tell 194 was a height that was beyond her from her opening round attempt at that height to the final one. She just couldn't get her head around what phases she needed to do to get over this height. That was her best attempt, though. Well, and, and again, when you get to when you get to a bar, you're jumping at a personal best in a championship like this. You've got to just rely on the things that got you there in your training. Trust those things. Don't try to do anything extra, because then and only then can you go back and you can look at it on film and say, look, we did everything we trained to do. Here's what's missing. Is it, is it our time in the weight room? Is it our time? Is it our time on the track? Do we need more time in the film room? Well, Vashti Cunningham. The U.S. would have expected her to be in this competition deep into the heights. She needs this to stay alive. Mm -mm. And it just wasn't there tonight for Vashti. I had a chance to, I've had a chance to see her jump on many occasions. I've seen the two meter jump. And when she is on, and look at that, you, you could just, she just flew right past her takeoff. But you know it's there because she had that great clearance at 190 where you saw the Vashti of old. Yes. You knew it was there. So what does she do from here? Well, she, she's going to jump at the Diamond League. You, you know that because she, she wants to end up back in Eugene, Oregon, uh, where the Diamond League final is. Um, so, you know, but I think this is just a, a bump in the road for her. Well, she's still really young at 25, so we will see a lot more of Cunningham from the USA, but she bows out of this competition in 11th position. Morgan Lake sitting in eight. The athlete from Great Britain. What can she do here on her third round attempt? Oh! And she's over! And prior to her going, I just thought, does she believe? Does she believe? And she certainly does. And Morgan's one of those athletes who she's, she's so accomplished. She's been jumping well for so many years. She just has to trust her run. And it really looked like she was trusting there. Now she gets to jump at tying a personal best at 197. Oh, Ooh. Kulichenko, that was a fabulous attempt at what would have been a personal best. She got her height. Well, long season for that young lady. Well, she's only 21 years of age. And you, you sort of sense from that last round attempt that she's got this height in her as she gets older. But what an opportunity to come out here as a young athlete, be in that same competition with some of the Ladies who you, you certainly look up to. Well, she'll walk away with an equal personal best from the qualifying of 192, so. You know, love the Finnish athlete. Oh! Talk me through that one, Dan. That was, seemed to get the height, but wow. landed on the bar. Well, that was a really solid jump. All the height way out in front. Just spacing issues on that one, but wow. She put her foot in the ground and, and just took off. You know, and that's the kind of jump that you need to see on the first attempt. Now you can make the adjustment, come back, replicate it, find the positioning. Well, Yunala of Finland fouls out of the competition in 13th. Equal 13th position with Kulichenko of Cyprus. Okay, so now we start to get quite interesting with the heights. We're pushing the bar up to 197. Nicola Oli Schlager is still in the competition. Sitting in fourth position currently with her opening round miss at 194. Eleanor Patterson, Lamara Distin, and Irina Gerashchenko are occupying the gold medal spot so far. And Tamsin, while they're putting the bar up, I like just, you know, take a second to recognize the, the world of high jumping lost a good one this year. Uh, Dick Fosbury. Uh, passed away, lost his battle with uh, recurring cancer. Um, but what uh, what a legend he was, uh, a trailblazer, and uh, his certainly his his leaving has impacted impacted a lot of people, not just in high jumping in the world of track and field, but he was uh, 
just somebody so well respected in the Pacific Northwest where I, where I grew up and the state of state of Idaho. So, you know, it, it's hard not to think about Dick Fosbury when you come to a championship like this. He was an icon, wasn't he? And everybody out there competing is doing the Fosbury flop, so he will be remembered forever. Eleanor Patterson of Australia, defending champion. Unfortunately, misses that opening attempt at 197. That's the first blip on her score sheet. Kind of almost looked like she slipped a little bit on that takeoff point. Just well, didn't it, lock it in. Yeah, and that's and it's interesting. What we've been seeing kind of all day is that that takeoff point has been a little bit of a point of contention for everybody. You know, finding finding the right one. I think somebody who has certainly found that takeoff point shouldn't change a thing. Is is Lamara Distant? A little bit surprising. Patterson, even even though she didn't look like she hit her takeoff that great, she still had a chance to make that. She'll go back, making adjustments, and and boom, the next one. Well, Jamaicans have been having a fabulous championship here. The World Athletics champs. Mm, that, that did not look anything like any of her other attempts. So it's does a, that mean it's psychological? It's a struggle out there. This uh, this is big step out on Ooh. the big step out on the right foot. And what he asked, so what happened is, you know, she just didn't hold her line, and she took a big step out on the right foot. And when you do, the left foot comes a little bit too far in, and you just fly past that takeoff. Yeah, you really saw that ankle roll, mm -hmm. didn't you? So she would have lost a lot of power out of that takeoff point. But what's interesting, you watch a lot of slow motion jumps in the high jump. A lot of times, these jumpers, their ankle just yep. like bends like mad. So they're they're very used to it. Oh, Hansel of Germany. It's not how you take an attempt in the high jump. <laughs> Just balked out of that one at the last minute. Well, good case of, you know, I'm really going to go for this one. Just too much speed. Well, she needs the speed on the runway, doesn't she, to get over this high. But she's got to be able to control it in the takeoff point. All right, what is the youngster, the 18-year-old from Serbia, Angelina Topic, got for us? She looks so young too, doesn't she? She might not have the experience at this global open level yet, but she is jumping like she has been doing it for years. But unfortunately, that first attempt just off, as you see, family members and fans in the crowd. She's quickly becoming a star in her home country with the success she's already had at such a young age. She's still got another World Juniors. So she's already been to two and she's still got another one that she can go to next year. That's not fair, <laughs> right? You, you come here and you compete with the seniors, but you can always go back and jump against the juniors. Well, she won the bronze last year, so, I mean, she'd definitely have to be the favourite, wouldn't she, going into next year's World Under-20s. So she could do a World Under-20s next year and an Olympics, as we see. Gerashchenko. Oh. I thought she was over that. Well, you and I both celebrated that before that came down. Because it looked like a great takeoff. She looked like she had the hip height. Oh, just pulled it down with the back of her knees. Well, she was fourth in the Olympics. And she is desperate to get on the podium here. She was fourth in Eugene last year as well. And it's just that position where you just want to go home with a little bit of bling. And I think in the whole competition, she is the one who has looked so focused from the moment she's walked out there. And even with that failure, her first one of the night, she still didn't let it get to her. She's just straight away focusing on her next attempt. What can Mahuchik do? She can put some pressure on the rest of the field. And she does with an opening round clearance of 197. The only athlete so far in this competition to go clear. She has shot into the lead. Well, but look at her reaction. You know, this is a, this is a bar that she's very adept at making. But this is not an easy competition. And she's just like, whew. You know, whatever they're dealing with out there, some of the issues that that's going on and it's just high pressure, high tension. You know, it's getting to even, it's getting to even uh, Mahuchik. 
as her coach, Tatiana Stepanova. They're living and training in Belgium at the moment. And just an, an incredible story of her getting out of Ukraine. A six day car ride gets her out of the war zone and she shows up at the World Indoor Championships in Belgrade and wins the gold. She has great crowd support. Mahuchik Lake. Again, she's going to have to go back and reassess. She didn't get as much height on that attempt as she did in her last attempt at 194. Well, you can't take these takeoffs for granted. You know, this, this, this surface just isn't lending itself to you know, I'm going to do what I always do. Special concentration. Well, Oli Schlager's the last athlete to take their first round attempt. Gets the crowd involved, looks up to the sky. Can she join Mahuchik in the gold medal position? Yes, she can! First round attempt, first time clearance, 197. The athlete with the highest jump in the year, in the world this year, has gone over 197 on her first attempt. Well, she's in the groove now. She just looks like she's found a happy place out there. And <laughs> whether she's forcing it or not, it's, it's, it's absolutely working, but she's finding joy in the moment. She's a fantastic athlete, even after last year where she struggled to recapture her Olympic medal year. She was still so happy for her fellow competitors. She said that no matter what happens, she wants to be remembered in this sport for the way she loves people more than the way she jumped high. And you can see that through her personality through the screens. That's exactly how she is. What you see is what you get with Nicola Oleschlagers. Eleanor Patterson would have seen a fellow countrywoman clear this height. She knows that she can do it. She's the equal national record holder with 2.02. They've both spoken about in this final wanting to break that national record. It is within them. Oh, such an aggressive run up. It was a good attempt, Dan. Well, I don't think she changes anything. This is what she did on these opening bars and she boomed them. Just stay at it. She's put some pressure on herself though. The defending champion, she has two X's to her name now at 197. She opened this competition off so well with three clearances on the three opening heights. And she knows now her back is against the wall and she has to clear this on her next attempt to stay alive in the competition. She's currently in the bronze medal spot because of that clean sheet that she had leading up to the 197. But Lamara distance is also in the bronze position and she has an attempt now that could push Eleanor Patterson, the defending champ, outside of the medals. No. And it wasn't a great attempt. We saw Eleanor take a really nice attempt at 197, but that just looked like she has... Ch it's like we've got two different athletes from the start of this competition to this height 197 with Lamara Distant. And you have to just say, well, where did that 194 jump go? You just looked wonderful. And I think that's one of the challenges out here. You t it's a long time in between jumps. You, the, and, the, and these athletes are experiencing things that sometimes coaches just can't teach them. You can't prepare them for how one time you get up and you feel good, then the next time you get up and you don't. You know, it's just that's something these athletes have to deal with, come to these championships, get a feel for it, understand, all right, this is what I need to work on the next time I'm out there. Hansel of Germany. 
Didn't get the height on the takeoff. We now have some athletes here who could put some extreme pressure on athletes that were talked about as medal chances. If they can just hit heights that many of them have done before. But Lamara Distant, her personal best is this height. And it's like she's actually, if she could go back and watch the 194 jump and understand that that would have cleared 197. But it's almost like she now knows that she's jumping for a personal best. She's never jumped. She's only done it once. You know, she's she's cleared 197, but so it'll be an equal, equal personal best. But it's a big ask. But it's just, it's amazing to see an athlete who looks so, so good, looks so differently once the bar's just been moved up three centimetres. Well, and, and it's just one of those things that a coach has to drill and drill and drill and say, give me the same jump. You know, so so often in the pole vault, athlete makes the bar. He's, I'm going to switch poles. I'm going to go up. It's like, no, 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 no. Just give me the same jump. Just give me the same exact jump, same effort level, same mental level. So don't complicate it as we see. Angelina Topic. She misses her second round attempt as well. Well, it looked like she made some really good adjustments on that. She took off a little farther away from the bar and just stalled out just a little bit. But see, that's encouraging as a coach. What's difficult is when you watch an athlete go out there and make three attempts that look exactly the same without any success. But if you're gonna if you're gonna do something different, man, do something different. Show me that you fixed the one thing that we talked about. If you're gonna show me that you know, you show me that you didn't do something else well. So I, I, I like the looks of that. I've got a lot of faith that Topic Topic certainly can get over this on her next jump. Well, here's Garishchenko. She has her ritual where she reminds herself the phases she needs to complete to get over this bar. A two meter jumper this year. So certainly capable of getting over 197. Second round attempt. No. Well, 197 is certainly sorting out this high jump field. Only two athletes so far have cleared this height. We have Mahuchik from Ukraine and Oli Schlagers from Australia. And they're sitting in the equal gold medal position now. Opening round attempt clearance at this height. It's very, very important from judging how athletes are struggling to get over heights that we would have thought that they would be getting over a lot easier in this competition. Well, and being a two-meter jumper, you know, two-meter jumper this season, yeah, you, you would expect her to get to get over this bar. Well, Morgan Lake, who was such a fabulous junior, you mentioned before. Heptathlete with such a strong high jump. She won both at the world under 20s. She's now 26 years of age. Oh, focusing on the high jump, and that was a good attempt. That really was. I was in attendance in 2014 when she won both of those titles in Eugene, Oregon. Eugene, Oregon put on a fantastic under 20 world championships. and. Morgan Lake was one of the stars that came out of there. And she did choose to focus as a senior athlete on that high jump. She had an incredible indoor season this year. The coach's mantra is control the controllables. Nicola Olislagas is in a nice position at the moment. She can just sit back, chill out for a little bit knowing that these women miss these third round attempts that are about to come up, she will definitely be getting a medal. Eleanor Patterson, the defending champion, she has her back against the wall here. She looks relaxed. Coach Alex Stewart, 
to move to. She was a country girl. Leon Gatha in Victoria. I'm sure they're all watching on from home. So she's made the hard decision. She's moved to New South Wales when she had a couple of tough years. And since that move, she's gone from strength to strength. This is a big attempt. Yes! She's over! Champions win their backs against the wall. They rise to the occasion, and Eleanor Patterson has got the job done on that third round attempt. And watch this clearance with authority. She goes back to what works for her, and I don't think she ever went away from it, but man, she just brings it around that turn, sweeps that arm, and just goes. Well, she's in the bronze medal position now. She will put pressure on the other athletes, including Diston, to remain in this competition. They need to clear this. To get a medal now, they need to clear this. The Jamaican, Lamara Distant, who looks so good at the beginning of this competition. Can she refocus? Oh. The disappointment's etched across her face because she knows that this is a missed opportunity. Well, and this certainly is a bar. has better line. Certainly a better line on that run. She clatters it on the way up. Yeah, just kind of hooks it on the way down as well. Looked a little bit better in real time than it did there on the slow motion. But uh, no, Lamara Distant is somebody who we can identify and say she's going to be a factor in major championships in the future. Well, at the moment, she sits in fourth position, which is where she'll remain if all these remaining athletes miss this third round attempt. Christina Hansel of Germany. Oh, not a bad attempt by Hansel. Well, solid competition for her. She came through on a third attempt. Big 194 jump. You can leave this competition feeling really good about this finals. So Hansel finishes the competition in seventh position. She'll only move from that position if Morgan Lake is able to clear his height. 18-year-old Angelina Topic. That was so close. She got the height and she knows it. Just flicked it with her calves on the way through. She is a star of the future, isn't she, Dan? Well, that was a big jump. Wow. Look at the height on this. Boom. She's way over. You know, she's just, and she knows it. She's like, oh, man, I had that. I had that. And she just came out of her layout just a tiny bit early. That's just experience. Well, she's finished in sixth position in this women's high jump championships at the age of 18. Last round attempt for Gerashchenko. Another athlete who started this competition off looking fantastic. Big arms. Oh, in a mirror image, she got the height as well. Like Topich. But just couldn't get the whole body over. And clips it, as you can see here, the legs. But it's not a great takeoff. There you see that takeoff foot. It's just not solid. I think everybody was, I think everybody was just struggling with that takeoff point just a little bit. This track is quick. Well. Gerashchenko bows out of the competition in equal fourth with Distin, which is where they'll remain unless, unless Morgan Lake of Great Britain, the 26-year-old, coached by Robbie Gubaz, the silver medalist from London Olympics, Rio fourth. It's a new coaching athlete relationship. 
There's one final attempt here at 197. What can she do? Jump for Morgan Lake. Love the self-talk at the beginning. So confident on that turn. And she sticks it in there and lays it out. And she does just give it a tickle. And she's proud of herself oh, for that one. Yeah, that's a fist pumping moment right there. Look at her, she's absolutely stoked. She's moved herself clear to fourth position. So no matter what happens in the rest of this competition, our final four are decided. And Morgan Lake with Robbie Grabaz, fantastic high jumper, Olympic medalist at his home Olympics. Nicola Olishlagers, we've got two Australians. And I'm tipping there's a lot of people up from the land down under watching this final play out. Nicola Ollie Schlagers and Eleanor Patterson, big stars of the women's high jump. And Mahuchik, is it her time to shine to get that global outdoor gold medal? She burst onto the scene in Doha. Incredible competition there. It looks really relaxed. Mm -hmm. Wow. How do you win championships? Just find your happy place when all the chaos is going on around you. And boy, Mahuchik looked like she was in a really good place there. Eleanor Patterson has the chance now. Bar has been placed at 199. She can put a lot of pressure on this field with the first round clearance, which is what she did at the 202 height at the World Championships to take that gold medal when she was out of that spot with earlier around misses so she knows how to do it she knows how to put the pressure on the field she wants the crowd's involvement oh and she's over she has done it again she has put pressure on the field like she did last year sails over 199 on opening attempt well, and I don't think this was her best jump, and she gets over this. Looks like maybe a slight bit of fatigue here as the bar goes up. But she finds a way to wriggle over this. She continues to bring the speed. Well, and that's where the benefit comes, being the first round jumper, doesn't it? You can place a lot of pressure. You can play with the mind games of your competitors. They now know that if they want to get the gold medal, they need this opening round clearance. Mahuchik has been pushed back down to silver for the time being. Oh, she's a star, isn't she? What a champion. And it was a good attempt. Oh, yeah, there she, there she goes with the self-talk, self-congratulations. Boom, no hesitation. Just do what you do. Put your foot in the ground, rise up. And it's just like, I got it. And that facial expression, there was no joy. There was no celebration. She knows this high jump competition has really started to heat up. The top athletes in the world are there. And they've brought their A game. Now that the bar's higher. Well, Morgan Lake. This will be an outdoor personal best. She has cleared this height indoors earlier this year when she broke the national record. That was a good-looking jump. 
I'm sure her coach is saying, look, give me another one just like that. She was a little out, but the speed seemed to help her there. Oh, that's one she's going to look back on and say, that's the one. And you can't waste attempts like that. And a lot of confidence. That's a confidence building jump. Well, she's going to have to do something very special to get onto the podium, Morgan Lake, because she is in that fourth position. But because of earlier failures, it means that to get into a medal position, she's going to have to get over this bar and rely on Ollie Schlager's not getting over this bar. But the way Ollie Schlager's looked in her last attempt over 197, she's bringing the joy to this competition. Like she always does, smile on her face. Crowd definitely engaged with her. <sighs> well, Nicola Ollie Slaggers has now moved down to the bronze medal position. The competition in high jump is fascinating. It can just change like that, can't it, Dan? Well, and what's interesting is it's, it's the first attempt make that really is the, uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's the shaker up, you know, if somebody can step up and just boom, first attempt, oh, wow, you know, now all of a sudden, <laughs> Patterson went from fourth to third to third to first, and now she's in second. Oh, Nicola looking over to her coach that she's been with since she was a youngster. Had the same coach the whole way through, Matt Horsnell. They're so connected that she didn't even have to get off her chair. He would have just given her instruction with hands and she would have straight onto it. She knows exactly what she's got to do. They have a great athlete-coach relationship. She spent some time with her idol leading into this, Blanka Vlasic. She is Croatian descent. It's all about Morgan Lake now. Taking her second round attempt at 199. Oh, another nice attempt by Morgan Lake. She's definitely in the form of her life. What does she have to change here, Dan, to get over 199? I, I don't think she does much of anything. She's really in a nice groove. Both of these attempts, I believe, would have been easy makes at 197. And so the way she's jumping right now is just you peck away at it. You just peck away at it. Maybe maybe you just squeeze the tushy a tiny bit. There, honestly, it's just a, it's a hesitation on the on the top. Yep. And um, you know, but you, you don't make any big changes because she really looks good. I wonder if that's what her coach Robbie will say to her. Squeeze the tushy on yeah. the way over. <laughs> See if we get in trouble with that one. But no, it, what's interesting though is this is where Morgan Lake needs to believe she belongs. Yeah, with, no. the with the best of the world in the final in the final four. I think that was the perfect description of it because you know she's she's brushing it with yeah. her backside. So you know to get over it, she's getting great height. This has got to arch the back and try and squeeze the bum up a little bit. Nicola Oleschlager's second round attempt. Oh, nicely done! And she likes it. There's Matt. And Nicholas had such an incredible 2023 so far. Equaled the Australian record in Lausanne. Disappointed with last season. And squeezed every ounce out of that. Just brushes it a little bit on the way over. Well, and now is when you, you know, I was looking at the scoring. It's like, well, maybe she needs to pass this bar and go to the next one. But Morgan Lake, there's still four competitors. She needed that. She needed that to help try to secure a bronze. It's going to force Morgan Lake to make this. So if you're Morgan Lake, though, and you're out of the middle contention and you're already in fourth, you've passed, right? And that's what she's done. She's passed. So she is going to miss taking this 199 attempt. It's going to be a big ask, but she's going to go and take one final attempt at 201, unless, of course, she can do a new lifetime best. First time over two metres it would be for Morgan Lake to make it a massive, massive competition. 
Well, you talk about a single jump that would change the competition. Whew. First attempt, a 201 on a final attempt for Morgan Lake. Yep. But it's the only way. It's the yeah. only way she can push herself up into that middle position. She'd still be in fourth even if she did clear that final attempt at 199. So it's exactly what she yeah. needs to do, but it's a big ask. So currently the competition, Yaroslava Mahuchik is in that gold medal position as the bar moves to 201. Eleanor Patterson of Australia is in the silver medal position. And Nicola Oli Schlagers with that second round attempt at 199 is in the bronze medal. The medals haven't been decided yet because Morgan Lake still has one more attempt and she's going to take it for a new lifetime best of 201. To get over that magical barrier of two minutes would be pretty, two meters would be too, pretty special. There's Eleanor's coach, Alex Stewart. Had another couple of finalists in the men's competition. Eleanor Patterson, opening jumper at this height, 201. What can she do? Oh. Well, Eleanor's season's best is 196. We have spoken about how she's come in after an operation where she had to learn how to walk again, learn how to run again, and learn how to jump again. And that was only six months ago. So to be in the competition, sitting in the silver medal position, if you had have said that to Eleanor six months ago, she would have been pretty happy. Well, in hearing that story, it's, it's absolutely phenomenal. It just it baffles me to, 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 to think that this is where she is six months later. And she's so focused, she's so determined. As is Mahuchik's coach. It's almost like Mahuchik's coach, Tatiana, is out there jumping with her. I think she's so nervous she can't sit down. She had definitely had the height there, Mahuchik. That was a good attempt. Big, big jump there. She might have just crushed the soles of the other competitors oh. on, a, on a make right on a make right there. Ooh, big hip height. She's got this height in her though tonight, doesn't she? She's so invested in her charge. And you would be, you spend so much time as an athlete and coach duo. I see the emotions of the coaches. It's just as high as the athletes out there competing. Well, and a former athlete and then a coach, just you just realize how much control you don't have <laughs> sitting up there in the stands. Well, Morgan Lake, with her only attempt at this height, 201. She passed her last attempt at 199. This to stay in the competition and for a lifetime best. Well, unfortunately, it's not to be for Morgan Lake, but what an incredible competition for her. She will go and be very proud of what she's been able to achieve here in Budapest. Fourth in the world, she has made giant leaps forward in the women's high jump. Yeah, it's super fun to watch as well. She's always a crowd favorite. She comes in as the eighth ranked high jumper in the world, finishes fourth. That is a tough, tough jump to ask, to pass your last attempt at 199 and, and then take a single jump at, at 201, which would have been a lifetime, an all-time lifetime best, but she did a really good job out there. And she talked a little bit about believing and working on the mental part of, of championships. And I, I think she really accomplished a lot along those lines in this competition. Well, I think her and her new coach will go away from this and, and move forward to Paris very positively. Now, Nicola Oli Schlagers is in the box seat to put the pressure on the competition. Everyone else has failed at this height. Can she go clear? Oh, no. It's not to be for Nicola on her first attempt at 201, but 
what we do know now, Dan, is we know the, these three athletes left in the competition are going to get the medals. What did you think of all three jumpers' first round attempts at 201? Well, if you had to say who's going to win the competition, of course, you know, Mahuchik looked, looked the best. But it's just, you know, it's late in the competition. Um, Eleanor Patterson has taken the most amount of, of jumps. We don't have to add them up. They're about, also Ola Schlager is about the same as, as Patterson. Fatigue is going to be uh, a factor here as you get into 9, 10, 11, and, and 12 jumps, certainly. But it's been a fun competition. You know, it's easy for us to sit up here in the stands. I, I'm not tired. I'm not fatigued. And, <laughs> Neither are you, but this is this is what championship high jumping at the world class level is all about. Well, Mahuchik's taken six attempts so far. Um, Oli Schlager's seven and Eleanor Patterson eight. So here goes Eleanor Patterson. Two Australians are going to be on that podium, which means the Aussie team are going to walk away from these championships with six medals, which is an incredible effort for the Australian team. They'll be very proud of what they've been able to achieve. They also had a fourth position national record with Maddie Denny. So they have an incredible chance to do well next year. But Eleanor Patterson, she's still alive in this competition. 201, second attempt miss. She has cleared 202 to win those world championships last year, but her best this year so far is 196. So she is already improved on her season's best. She's such a fabulous big meat performer. She comes to a championships and she always lifts. And all she can do at this point is just continue to just drive at it. You know, you think about some of the changes that she could make. She, she's, you know, she's just bringing it. It's all timing for her. Well, there might be a slight delay in the competition because next jumpers Mahuchik and Nicola Olislagas have run-ups that would take them out onto the track. And we have a 4x400 that is about to start. So for the athletes now, they have that little bit more time just what would you do? My Hoochie's obviously sitting there. I'm not sure she needs to rug herself up. It's pretty hot out there still. Well, if it's that hot, she, why, is she, why is she in a sleeping bag? She's, <laughs> she's got a blanket over her legs. But they're a picture of concentration, aren't they? Patterson, she's had that second round <laughs> attempt. She's sitting in the silver medal position. Mahuchik knows that after one lap of the 400, the second runner will go around and cut in and then she'll take her attempt. There's a lot going on in the stadium. Mahuchik, bronze medalist at the Olympics at 19. She has two silver world championships medals. The first one in 2019 was at 18 years of age. She's desperate to hit the top of the dais at the World Outdoor Championships. She won the gold at the World Indoors in 2022 with a 2.02 jump. She's been a fabulous junior. She's been living and training in Belgium. A lot of being said about Mahuchik. Is she the one to push that world record? First of all, she's got to get over. 201, and she does! First athlete clear in this competition at 201, and it was a great attempt, Dan. Well, she looks so calm in between jumps. She just sits until it's time to get up and time to jump, but Oh, boom, she is just locked in. Great attempt. And it looks in the slow-mo like she slightly brushes it. But wow, in real time, it was just a beautiful, nice high clearance. Well, she's now put pressure back onto the Australians. Nicola Oli Schlagers still leads. The 2023 outdoor top list with that 202 equal national record in Lausanne Diamond League. She's had a fabulous 2023 competition so far. Oli Slager's second attempt at 201. 
What has she got? Oh! Ooh. That was a great attempt. Very close, and she knows it. So does our coach, Matt Horsnell. Take us through this one, Dan. Well, you look at that takeoff. Good layout. She's jumping over the bar at the in the position that she wants to be in and at before the halfway point. And she is arching for everything she's worth right there. But that's a good feeling jump. Give you the confidence that you can come out there and you can put another one down and you can get over this. Well, so she goes back to the journal. She chooses one area to focus on for her next jump. What would it be? You gotta be patient. You know, the bar's the bar's high. The amount of time, the amount of time that it takes you, that, th that it takes the jump to occur, it just has to be a slight bit longer. And so you just have to be a little bit more patient on the top. Just stretch it up. Well, Eleanor Patterson, she's in the silver medal position. Mahuchik. It's got one hand on that gold medal with her clearance at 2.01. For the Aussies to take that gold medal off her, to wrestle it out of her clutches, they are going to have to jump very high. They're sticking at this 2.01 height because they still have a battle, the Aussies, between that silver and bronze. So rather than take it up to try and take on Huchik, but if Patterson clears this, then that's what Oli Slagers will do. She'll skip her attempts, but Patterson to put pressure on her teammate. and she bows out of the competition with the best clearance of 199. She is currently in the silver medal position. But what a fabulous effort for the defending champion who's had a tough year with injuries to come out and finish on the podium yet again. She looks disappointed because she is a champion. But what about this attempt, Dan? Oh, just a little heavy footed and you even heard it in real time that last step just goes bam it just hits a little heavy she just doesn't come off it very lightly and you could tell really as soon as she hit that takeoff point it's like yeah that's not going to be it but she made the she made a good attempt at the bar anyways but been really fun competition watching her and absolutely amazing after the injuries that she's had to overcome well nicola ole Schlagers knows that if she clears this she takes the silver medal from her countrywoman in Patterson. It's a height that she has cleared this year. She was fifth in the World Championships last year. She's an Olympic medalist with that silver. She bows out of the competition with a bronze medal. Two Australians are on the podium, but the night belongs to the Ukrainian Yaroslava Mahuchik. The Australians will rejoice to have two athletes on the podium. Well, the Australian women looked looked dominant in the qualifying rounds. They, you knew they were going to be two athletes who were going to be here, some of the last athletes standing here in the finals. But it's just fun to watch them work. Two different personalities and, you know, two certainly different styles of jumping. And that's what you got to love about the high jump as well is there's just more than one way to get this done. You know, not, not one technique is more dominant than another. And, even everybody's in different body styles in a, in, a, in a lot of different ways. Well, the athlete who was the European Athletics Rising Star in 2019, absolutely brilliant 
Junior. Her goal for 2023 was to not cry. 2022 was the most difficult year of her life. She still came away from the World Championships last year with a silver medal. She's had to really stand up and be so mature for somebody so young. She was desperate for that gold medal. And she has come to these World Championships here in Budapest. And she now knows that she has achieved that first goal. But she is not done yet. She is going to continue jumping in this competition. Well, that 201 bar and that 201 make, it had plenty of room. So it'll be interesting to see what, uh, what the bar goes up to next year. Whoa. It's going up to 207. 207, an incredible, incredible height. It would be a personal best. Her PB so far is, or as the Americans say, PR is 206. So she's put the bar up to a personal best. I'm not sure if you saw before the vision of Eleanor Patterson in the silver medal position. She had tears welling up in her eyes. You can see when you have a roller coaster of a journey in the highs, the lows, once you achieve a goal like this, the emotion just comes out. In contrast, Mahuchik still has to refocus. She's just set that bar up to a lifetime best of 207. What a massive, massive attempt that would be. Hardly any women have cleared 207 ever. Well, well Mahuchik is already number six on the all-time jump list with uh, two meters, two meters six. Is that, is that, is that correct? She's number yep. six all time. But well, this is only this is only two centimeters. Equal fifth. Yeah. She's equal fifth. She's this is only two centimeters below the world record. And mm -hmm. we just haven't seen anybody here in the women's high jump really, really just challenge that. We've seen some men jump after a world record. You can see the emotion in Eleanor Patterson's eyes. She has worked really hard to get back into the sport of high jumping. She had a, a tough time. She was so successful as a junior in Australia and in the global circuit. She won a Commonwealth Games in 2014 and then wasn't picked in 2018 when arguably she deserved to be picked. She walked away from the sport for a while, if you can believe, and then she moved to New South Wales with Alex Stewart, her coach, and then last year stood on the top of the podium. But I think for her this year, her silver is a gold because of the way that she's come in to this competition with her back against the wall. Only had a season's best of 196. There's Alex Stewart on the right with the cool sunglasses. <laughs> you, you better be cool. Yeah, yeah. I like them. And I think both those coaches, Matt Horsnell, and Alex Stewart should be really proud of themselves. What they've done with both those Australian athletes out there is just nothing short of incredible. And for the first time in a global championships, we have the two Australians. We've had it before in the past when the high jump first started. We had fabulous Australian high jumpers. We were so competitive on the world stage, but over the last 20 years, these two athletes followed in the footsteps of Alison Inverarity to get that Australian record and push that bar to two metres plus. First and only two Australian women over two metres and to have them on the podium together for the first time. Because they've sort of shared their global year, you know, like in, in, in 2021, it was all about Nicola Lischlager's last year was all about Eleanor, but this year both Australians are on the podium together. Always happy, always smiling. The athlete who wants to be remembered for the way she went about the sport and the friends she made than the heights that she jumped. Well, and what's funny as well, you, you notice the Lamara Distin is down there. Angelina Topic, you know, if, if you're done competing, you could move out of the area, but they're going to sit down there. They're going to watch this competition soak it in. Mm -hmm. And I grew up hearing you want to see a champion, you want to be a champion, watch a champion go about their business. Well, and they're great mates with Mahuchik. Eleanor Patterson in the indoors painted her nails in the Ukraine colors. They're very good friends, so they'll be willing her over this bar. Oh, that was a good attempt. Wow. A six centimeter rise and 
you kind of expect uh, her to be shocked a little bit about the height rise, but man, she really gave that a run. Well, that first round attempt says that she actually has this clearance in her, don't you think? Yeah, and look, look at Coach just saying, all right. You know, sometimes you put it up there and just wish for it, hope for it, but no, let's execute this. This is, uh, this is, this is within her abilities. Do you think having the pressure taken off, knowing that she's got that elusive outdoor gold medal, I may mean, say elusive, she's so super young, she hasn't really <laughs> no, but, been at but, it for so long, but... Uh, I think a lot of people thought that this was what the, the way the competition last year was going to go. And I you think, know, you know, the the the, uh, the Australians, they, they, they surprised everybody. And, you know, but here here we are. And I, I think she she was out for redemption. But once she got the gold in her pocket, now she can open herself up to the possibility of a, of a, of a new personal best. And if she gets over this, we will see jumps at a world record. Well, a lot of people have been talking about that world record and who has the capabilities of clearing it. And, and Mahuchik has been the one that most people have been saying has that potential. She's just waiting now for the women's four by four. Gives her a little bit more of a breather. I see the other athletes. Consul still out there from Germany. And all the Schlagers, they're watching on to see the other events. There's always so much happening in an athletic stadium. She goes just going through rehearsals, seeing what she can do differently from the last one, but it was a pretty good attempt. It'll be another one of those, just replicate what you did before. Right, Dan? A absolutely. Her last couple of jumps, she's really been in a groove. She doesn't need to change a thing. You know, it's just little minor adjustments here and there. But what's interesting, and, and, and I've been working with some young athletes recently, and. You know, the parents are inundating me with, you know, well, well how, you know, when should they warm up or when should they get up? You know, yeah. if they're watching and sitting and and it's watching a world championship like this and you see Mahuchik, you know, she's got three minutes time on the clock. She hasn't laced her shoes up yet. She's still in her blanket. <laughs> and it's like, okay, she knows exactly how much time she needs and the amount of time it will take her to get over to her mark and, and things of that nature. It all comes with experience. Well. Ukraine hasn't won a gold medal at the World Championships since 1999. She'll be the first person to do so since Inga Babakova did so at those World Championships in Seville. Here we go. What has Mahuchik? Oh my goodness. Wow. That was a fabulous attempt and she knows it. She's getting all the height there that's required to clear this bar. <laughs> wow, big height up in front. Look at this. Boom, she really. Hits it on the front side. Maybe just a fudge that, fudge that takeoff mark. Up right. about a, up about a foot length. But she is well over that. Oh my goodness! All right, let's get let's see a third attempt. I'm, I want to see a make here. She's she's certainly up and about for this height of 207, which would be a new lifetime best. And if she's able to do it, she will push herself up into equal third all time behind Stefka Kotsta Denevova. Now Kotsta Denevova jumped 209 for that world record. 
in the second all-time position was Blake Vlasic of Croatia, who people thought could be the ones, the one to get the world record. It didn't happen. So this world record has been around since 1987. You see Mahucic there stopping with the other high jumpers to clap the finish of the women's 4x4, which saw Netherlands take the gold. Mahucic looked pretty happy with that. <laughs> well, Femme Kabul brings Netherlands from third place to first on a wonderful 100-meter finish to close out these championships. But now all eyes are on Mahucic. Well, the athlete from Ukraine, she is going to be the last athlete to compete at the 2023 World Championships here in Budapest. Everything on the track has now finished. <laughs> Finally, we see a smile from the coach, Tatiana. <laughs> well, and the coach can't tell her anything at this point. It, it's, it's all in your hands. Great second attempt. Show it to me again. taking home the gold at this competition for the first time ever is Ukraine's Yaroslava Mahucic. Well, and that is a wonderful scorecard as well. She bypassed 185. She came in at 190. Nice, easy clearance for her. It took her two to get over 194, but when she did get over it, it was convincing. 197 on a first attempt, 199 on a first attempt. 201 on a second attempt that was absolutely enormous. That would win her the competition, and then we would see her bump it up to an all-time personal best and just miss out tonight. But you know that attempts at the world record are not far behind a world championship here. Absolutely brilliant competition. It had a little bit of everything. There were shocks when Mahucic missed that first attempt at 194. We knew the quality of athlete that she was, so it was a bit of a, a blip early in the card, but she regathered her thoughts and had a brilliant competition after that moment, was always in the driver's seat. She didn't look like losing from that moment on. Well, and she's so, she's such a good jumper. She looks so well adept. She always comes up in the big moment. But she's just 21. Yeah. Okay, and, but she just doesn't give the impression like you think she's an old soul and a, and a veteran out there, but no, she's, she's just a 21-year-old kid. Oh, my goodness. Well, and the Australians, they've only ever won one medal at the World Champs level, and that was Eleanor's last year, her gold. Now they have two. So the first time two Australians at World Championships have been on that podium. Brilliant scenes here. Mahucic, she'll take this medal back. The Ukrainians will be very proud of their superstar. Thank you so much. And all I want to say is to my father that I get the gold medal finally for my country. And I show that we'll never give up. Well, the Ukrainian athletes have just become fan favorites now, and not just at the World Championships, but at the Diamond League, at the Diamond League meetings, certainly as well. I got a chance to call the Special Olympics in Berlin, and the Ukraine athletes were just so celebrated there, and the rest of the world stands with Ukraine. Well, what a beautiful thing to say. She's told her dad that she's bringing the gold medal home. I'm sure he'll be so very proud of his daughter who started high jumping at the age of 13. By age 15, so just within two years, she was the world under 18 champion by the longest margin in the history of that competition with a 192 unofficial world record by a 15-year-old. She's an incredible 
junior athlete. She's only just out of the junior rank. She's 21 years of age. Three world championships in a row. She has been on the podium. It's hard to bet against her, but this one means a lot to her and you can see that the first time she's hit the top of the podium and she's been through a lot to get there. Well, you see the, the kit numbers there. And the Australians are going to celebrate tonight. <laughs> well, the Australians have had an incredible competition. Six medals. Two, they've had three bronzes. Curtis Marshall in the pole vault and Mackenzie Little in the javelin. Two silvers. Jemima Montag in the wall. And now Eleanor Patterson. And on the integrated feed, Rob and I kept discussing is like Australia didn't bring a very big team, but they brought a really quality team. Well, the beauty of the Australian team is what they do is they pick everybody that they can. So they'll pick the biggest team that they can who's able to get qualified. But here's Mahuchik, her winning clearance at 2.01. It was such a fabulous, fabulous jump. She pumps her fist because she knows that with that jump, she had put herself definitely in the box seat. And no other athlete was to clear this height in the competition. And that was her attempt at 2.07. She's getting closer. And she wouldn't be denied tonight. You, you, you really saw that early on in the competition. She passed the first height. And then boom, that 190. It was like, okay. What is she going to do tonight? <laughs> she celebrates with her family and friends in the crowd. And you're right, the Hungarians absolutely love her. They are onside. Went on the journey through the competition with her. Rose to their feet when she cleared that 201. Eleanor Patterson, the 27 year old Australian who was born in Leon Gatha, Victoria, went to Little Aths with friends and fell in love with the sport. Has certainly had her ups and downs, including this year where she had to have surgery on a fractured fifth metatarsal in her foot after a misstep in a competition in Slovakia. Do you know what? Eleanor knits in her downtime and she's got some of the Australian team knitting fabulous things. I know it's such a strange thing to do, but she knits. And Nicola Olislagas, who always makes everybody feel like they want to go out there and high jump because she looks like she's having the time of her life. But the night belonged to one person, and that was Yaroslava Mahuchik with that 201 clearance and a really great attempt at 207. She takes home the gold medal for Ukraine, and it's two Aussies in the silver and bronze. Eleanor Patterson, the defending champion, with a season's best of 199, and Nicola Olislagas in the bronze with 199.2. Well, good finish there. Morgan Lake, Lamara Diston, youngsters finishing in the top five there. It says.